वेलकम टू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ वीएलएस डिजाइन माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर संदीप गर्ग एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन ओरिएंटल कॉलेज ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी भोपाल टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन अबाउट माइक्रो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स फील्ड माइक्रो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इज अ टर्म दैट इज एसोसिएटेड विद एरिया ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी हैविंग वेरी स्मॉल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक पार्ट्स और एलिमेंट्स हियर इन माइक्रो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स वी आर फैब्रिकेटिंग अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ कंपोनेंट्स ऑन अ सिंगल चिप मींस दीस कंपोनेंट्स आर ऑफ वेरी स्मॉल साइज एज कंपेयर टू द size of discrete components like resistance inductance or capacitance now as the name suggests microelectronics is related to the study and manufacturing of very small electronic design and components devices these devices are made up of semiconductor materials means here all the components like resistance inductance capacitance these are the passive components and also the active components like transistors and diodes all are manufactured using semiconductor materials the semiconductor materials used is mostly the silicon or germanium silicon is preferred as it has higher temperature with standing capabilities now an ic can contain hundreds or millions of components on a single ic chip with the area of the order of 100 square millimeter means on an ic we are fabricating very large number of components so as to reduce the size of the chip because in previous days we are using discrete components due to which the size of the chip is very large nowadays we are integrating a large number of functions on the same chip so as to reduce the area reduce the power consumption reduce the delay and enhance the speed of the device and also to enhance the uh, noise uh, noise immunity of the device evolution of electronic devices the first electronic devices developed were the vacuum tubes these vacuum tubes contain two types of electrodes one is the cathode and another one is the anode the cathode emits the electron when a sufficient voltage is applied across it and these electrons are collected by the anode so the current flow in vacuum tubes is unidirectional these vacuum tubes become very prevalent in 1904 to 1940s here these vacuum tubes are used as components for designing the electronic circuits from 1904 to 1940 in 1940 with the discovery of the semiconductor material discrete transistors are fabricated these discrete discrete transistors are used as electronic components for designing the big circuits now in 1996 vlsi came into picture here uh, a large number of components are fabricated on the single chip here first only 10 components are fabricated then it is termed as small scale integration and after that when 10 to 100 components are fabricated on the chip then it becomes medium scale integration means medium scale integration means we are fabricating around 100 components on the single chip after medium scale integration comes large scale integration in that 100 to 1000 components are fabricated on the single chip and then comes very large scale integration that covers 1000 to 10000 transistors or components on the single chip so that with the invention of this vlsi the size of the chip is very much reduced and the number of functions can be fabricated on the single chip this will largely enhances the speed of the device and reduces the power consumption and also reduces the chances of failure of the device after vlsi comes vlsi surface mount circuits means this surface mount circuits can be directly mounted on the surface of the semiconductor material and here in case of integrated circuits they require an ic bed so that this ic will be placed on that ic bed here this surface mount circuits can be directly placed on the surface of the semiconductor chip The integrated circuit was invented in 1958 for the first time. The world transistor production has become more than doubled every year for the past 20 years according to Gordon Moore. He stated that the number of transistors on the chip becomes double in every 18 months. This law is applicable also for today's technology. Every year more number of transistors are produced than in all previous years combined means the number of transistors produced in 2019 will be more than the total number of transistors produced in 2018 and the previous years approximately 10 to the power 18 transistors were produced in recent year to compare this we can see that the number of cells in human human body is 10 to the power 14 or we can say the number of seconds elapsed since big bang is 10 to the power 17 so this number of transistors will be more than these figures so in one year the number of transistors will be more than 10 to power 18 transistors now with the reduction in transistor size there is a rapid increase in density of the microelectronics 
Here from this first graph, we can see that the number of components on a single chip in 1960 is 10. That increases to 100 in 1970 and increases to around 10 lakh transistors in 1985. In 2000, it increases to 10 to power 9 components on the single chip and in 2015, it increases to 10 to power 12 components on the single chip. So we can see from this graph that the number of components on the single chip is increasing with time which is according to the Moore's law. Here, due to this increase in number of transistors, the area of the chip reduces, that will reduce the power consumption, delay and enhances the speed of the device and also improves the noise immunity of the device. Now, in, in the second graph, we can see that <clears throat> the complexity of the microprocessor is increasing day by day. In 1965, the processor 40004 is fabricated, which has around 1000 components on the chip. In 1975, 8085 is fabricated that contains around 10,000 components. In 1980, 8086 is fabricated that contains around <clears throat> 20,000 components on the chip. And this complexity of the processor is growing day by day. In 1990, around uh, Intel has fabricated Pentium processor 3 that contains around 5 into 10 to power 6 components on the single chip. In around 2004, Intel has fabricated Pentium processor 4 that contains around 5 into 10 to power 8 transistors on the chip. And in 2005, again, Intel has fabricated dual core processor that contains around 10 to power 9 transistors. So from this curve, we can see that the complexity of the processor it is increasing day by day due to its, we can see that its speed increases. We can know that uh, P4 has more speed than P3 and the same dual core has much higher speed as compared to the Pentium processor. So due to the increase in number of components on the single chip, the power consumption reduces and also the speed is enhanced. This will also improve the noise margin of the device or the processor. So with the increase in uh, number of transistors, this all the parameters are improved. Thank you.